What is up, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what you're going to watch is the week number two preseason preview between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, if you do not want to watch this video, you don't want to see my ugly face, I completely understand that, but before you leave, make sure you drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and go over to my SoundCloud where every single video will be uploaded as an MP3 format so you can listen on the go to Treeb Talks. And the hardest working Jags YouTuber just became the hardest working Jags podcaster. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us waste no more time and hop right into the video. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Philadelphia Eagles preseason week number two preview. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time discussing anything in this preview because this week is going to be a lot like last week. Not a lot of starters are going to be playing. Not a lot of star power is going to be out there. But there are still going to be a couple of guys out there that need to prove themselves and make sure they stand out because another week in the preseason means another week down that you could possibly be cut off of this roster. Now, Will Richardson's not a guy that I think will get cut, but, you know, his progress and his progression is going to be very, very important this week. You know, uh, the coaching staff seem to really like Will Richardson. It seems like he's going to be earning a starting spot at that guard position, and that is something that I said during the offseason. I was like, I think Will Richardson, if he's going to get a fair shout, he needs to play the guard position, and that's what he's doing. And, you know, so far he's doing it well in camp enough to, you know, be considered a starter. But, you know, I think he's the guy that's going to play next week, and I think that he's going to need to shine. He's going to have to show me something to where I will be okay with him being, you know, the starting guard this upcoming season. Now, Gardner Minshew is another guy that we really need to see progress, or at least one of these quarterbacks, because as of right now, I think we have the worst QB depth in the NFL. Um, you know, you have Nick Foles, who, you know, honestly, if we're being honest with ourselves here, Jags fans, it's not the best, you know, a starting quarterback in the league. Like, you ain't going to draft him very high in your fantasy league. You know, you got Nick Foles, then you got Gardner Minshew, a six-round draft pick, Alex Magoo out of whoever knows where, and Tanner Lee, another six-round draft pick. So, you know, all of these guys are really not the best group of quarterbacks in the entire world. So if Nick Foles goes down, it's going to be a big struggle, so it seems. Now, maybe Gardner Minshew would perform better if he had targets around him, and I think we'll learn more about, you know, how real that storyline is uh, more in week three of the season because I think more of the starters are going to be out there this year. I mean, during that week, during week three over week two. But if Gardner, you know, has given kind of what the, the same people he's given in this in this week as he was last week, then I think Gardner Minshew is going to struggle just a little bit. But I'd like to see him progress. He did have a really good throw in training camp, uh, I believe it was two days ago. That really stood out to a lot of people. The Jags posted it on their Instagram, and it looked like a really good, you know, dart down the field. So Gardner Minshew looks like that game didn't affect him much. So we'll see how much... Uh, his confidence is wavered in this next week's uh, preseason game. And it's crazy because it's like Gardner Minshew is just can't do any worse than like an Alex Magoo or a Tanner Lee. It's so funny. Like he's out there. He has that backup quarterback job basically on lock because, you know, the other two quarterbacks behind him are just more trash than he is. And he's, you know, not the greatest. And I hate it. I hate to say that and base it off of one preseason game, especially because Gardner Minshew is my boy. But it just looked like he was confused out there. And I also hope that this play calling gets better this week in the preseason because we need to do some things that are going to play to Gardner Minshew's strengths. You know, if we have a guy out there that we're looking at to possibly be a backup quarterback, don't you think you'd kind of call more plays that would suit him better or that would suit his playing style so, you know, he can have some confidence and he can go out there, you know, build your offense around the most important position out there? You would think that they would do that, but they still put Gardner Minshew under center a lot in that game. So we need him to be more in the shotgun, run a little bit more of a spread offense, not a whole entire new offensive theory but you know what I mean like let him be in the shotgun let him spread the ball around let's see what Gardner Minshew does when he's actually in his element because when he's under center he's small and he like obviously didn't do that like at all at Washington State so he looked really really confused out there so we really need to just do some more things that play to Gardner Minshew's strengths now I'm also very excited to watch these running backs play from McQuell Armstead all the way to Alfred Blue both of those guys are guys that I'm really interested in seeing play and uh, it looks like Thomas Rawls, day by day, is getting more healthier. I wonder if he's going to be all ready to go for week number two. I'm not 100% sure, but he might be in there. So, you know, Thomas Rawls, another new guy that we're going to be looking at. Hayes is another guy that we need to keep our eye on. I always forget his first name, like, right when I start recording. So I just say his last name. But 
Uh, he had a good week, week one of preseason. He had one or two good runs that, you know, kind of made you open your eyes and go, oh, okay, this guy's on the field. We're seeing a little bit from him. Raquel Armstead is a guy that I think could make an impact during the regular season. And, you know, I've been sneaking him late in my fantasy drafts because I honestly think he's going to be making that much, dude. I think he's going to be going out there and doing work for the Jaguars even during the regular season, whether that be on, like, a special teams or on the offensive end of the things. Uh, because I think that Alfred Blue is going to be getting his fair shout at the offense as well because he looks like the most put-together running back uh, between him and Raquel Armstead. And, I mean, that's obvious because Alfred Blue clearly has the NFL experience over Raquel Armstead, so he's probably going to be getting a little bit more reps than Armstead is, but I still think he's going to be getting his fair share of reps. You know, I think the three backs during the season are going to be Fournette, Blue, and Raquel Armstead, and that's wild because both of those guys weren't there a year ago, and it used to be Yeldon and Grant. I'm not even sure if Yeldon ended up getting signed, but I know Corey Grant got signed by the Packers, and then he ended up getting released, and it was, that sucks. Like, Corey Grant's a guy that I really want to see succeed, so seeing him get cut by Green Bay sucks because they don't know what they missed in Corey Grant. Corey Grant's a stud. Hashtag I miss Corey Grant so much. But hopefully Alfred Blue and Raquel Armstead could make us change our mind on that. And now I'm also interested to see how much of the defensive back success last week was a fluke or if they are actually really that deep at that position. You know, C.J. Revis had a really good game, and I've been saying his praises all, you know, the whole week that he had a really good game. I just want to see what he does, and hopefully he does it again. And then, you know, guys like Quentin Meeks, who also kind of stood out a little bit. And then you got, um, who's it, Trey Hayes. Trey Hayes, you know, he needs to come out and play well. You know, these are a good group of young corners that... Look like they're balling out and really benefiting from being around the great players that they're around. And, you know, I hope they continue to do that on the defensive end of things. And Taven Bryant, the defensive line, man, that is still, that is the main thing that I'm going to be, you know, putting all my attention, all my focus towards is going to be that offensive, I mean, that defensive line. Because Taven Bryant's a guy that everybody's going to keep their eye on and everybody's going to talk about because, you know, people say, like, the most ludicrous things, like he's the biggest first-round bust in Jaguar history. You know, I don't think that, like, he's he's been in the league for one year, and I know his last preseason game didn't look terrific, but, you know, cut the guy some slack. Let, let's see what he does this week. Hopefully he shows out. I think Josh Allen gets a little bit more playing time this week, you know, to kind of be brought along even more, and hopefully he continues to make plays. Obviously had a tackle for the loss, uh, the first play that he was out there for the Jaguars in their first preseason game. So hopefully he continues to dominate and he continues to do well. And then you've got Dewane Smoot, who he is playing well. Don Terabius Russell, you know, he's another guy that's playing well. You know, people around the Jaguar camp are saying that that guy just works hard and he deserves a spot on the roster, so he's going to be kind of one of those guys. So this defensive line as a whole unit is going to be a group that I am going to be watching with a very, very close eye. I'm really excited to watch the secondary, but as of a critique level, I'm going to be really looking at the defensive line and the offensive line as well. And I'm not going to critique these quarterbacks really that hard. If the offensive line is sucking, you know, I didn't really judge Gardner or any of these quarterbacks too hard last week just based on the offensive line play which was absolutely garbage so hopefully this week that offensive line play steps up so then that way naturally the quarterbacks step up and we're going to be able to be a much better football team or at least put some points on the board let's see some josh lambeau this week whether that be kicking a field goal or kicking extra points obviously we prefer to kick the extra points but let's see some josh lambeau this week like let's get his leg involved let's make sure that we're scoring points because i swear to god I am not going to sit I'm not going to sit through another 29 to 0 Jaguar preseason loss and like be live. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not going to do it Jacksonville. So Gardner Minshew, that offense, you go out there, score some points, second string defense. If you guys are just going to sit there uh, and they're not scoring any points, you might want to go out there and try and get a pick six, fumble recovery, touchdown, basically anything. Let's put some points on the board. Let's score more points than we did last week, and let's just make sure that we're getting better every day. And hopefully this depth really shows out this week. And, you know, we as fans could kind of take a breath, believe, and say, okay, our second stringers, our backups, you know, our guys that are on the roster bubble aren't as bad as we think they are. Hopefully if they get called into an actual game, we can rely on them, and that is all the preseason is about, and I hope that they show out, and I hope Gardner Minshew, for the love of God, does well, because that's a boy I've been hyping up for a long, long time. I had the Jaguars drafting him in the sixth round in a lot of my mock drafts during the offseason, 
So I cannot be wrong on my take on Gardner Minshew. So hopefully he goes out there, he dominates, he does his thing. And the Jaguars, if they, you know, I don't care if the Jags win this preseason game. Let's just score some points. Everybody in the comments section down below say hashtag Jaguars just score some mother fucking points hopefully that does not demonetize the video but that wraps up the jaguars versus eagles preseason preview and that was the jaguars versus eagles preseason preview what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget check the links down below as well you can like me on facebook at troop talks follow me on twitter at troop talks or follow me on instagram at trey von pixley also if you haven't yet make sure you hit that subscribe button click the bell icon to get notified every single time i drop a new video i drop new content on this channel six days a week and nobody outworking me Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.